How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. It's around lunchtime right now, about 12.30 p.m. and I'm getting really hungry. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a very delicious and very cheap pork cutlet meal. All you need is one egg, a piece of this pork loin, a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of panko, and some oil to fry all this in. Now this whole packet is about $4.40, so each cutlet's gonna cost you about $1.10, 20 cents over here, about $1.30, about 10, 15 cents worth of panko, and about 10 cents worth of cornstarch. And when you add all this up, it's roughly about $2. So let's just get started in making this meal. Season it with salt and pepper. I like to add various spices like this cumin powder on top. Rub it in and also get the side over here. Okay, and then now the ordering is very important. You want to coat your steak with the cornstarch first. Make sure it's covered on all sides. Take an egg. You can just beat it on a plate like this. And then coat your pork chop with the egg. Make sure it's completely covered. Try to get as much of it as you can around the steak. And then now I'm gonna open up this panko over here. And then pour out enough just to cover the whole steak. I'd say it's about, eh, about that much. Spread it out like this. I'm trying to coat the steak with a bit more egg here. Make sure it all drips off. And transfer it. Now really press it in there. Just try to get as much of that panko onto the steak. You want as much of it as you can get on. It'll look like a little plumped up thing. It seems like I'm able to pick up almost all the panko. That's a good measurement. See, I really, really covered it. You gotta press it in there. Make sure it's completely covered by that breadcrumb. I sort of ran out of oil, so I have to use uh, what I have left over here in order to fry it. See, that's about enough right there. Heat this to about 350 degrees. You see the temperature is rising. I'll come back. So you can see it's starting to smoke a little bit and it's about uh, 300 some degrees. So it's ready for the pork chop. Okay. So we'll just put this in. You'll notice the pork chop is a little bit thick. So this might take very, very careful frying. I can see it's starting to get brown already. Well, this might be a little bit too fast, actually. This looks like it's getting a little bit too brown, so I'm gonna take it out and let it rest a bit so that it can uh, continue cooking without really cooking. This is how you can kind of save something, usually if, um, if it gets too thick or something and you're afraid the middle is not hot enough. And likely, the middle is not hot enough right now. We can just check with my thermometer here. Um, it's only 74, which is room temperature. It needs to be much warmer than that. Now, in order for the tenderloin to be edible and safe to eat, it needs to be about 134 degrees. Right now, it's at 85. You see the internal temperature rose by 10 degrees just sitting here. So this is good because the outside, it's not getting hotter, and yet um, the internal temperature is getting hotter. Okay, 89, it's still rising, which is really good. I'm surprised it's continuing to rise this much from 90 degrees, I'm very surprised. Usually I might put this back into the oil already to try to, um, you know, continue cooking it, but oh my gosh, look. It might just reach the proper temperature without me recooking it. I try to put the thermometer in the center more, just because the center is the part that I wanna reach the most. I'm really surprised. I, it almost seems like this is incorrect or something. Let me feel this meat here. It's pretty hot. Wow, this is interesting. It reached 134 degrees, the proper temperature to eat it without me overcooking it. And it is still, you know, relatively thick here. So this is a really good success. We'll see where this temperature ends up. Um, at its peak. I mean, this doesn't even feel like 136 on the outside right now. Let me check the temperature of this thing on the outside of this meat. 135 degrees, which is just right, actually. If it equalizes, um, it looks like it wants to stay around there. 
It sure doesn't feel like 137 because all the breadcrumbs is keeping me from properly contacting the tonkatsu here or pork cutlet. Okay, it's settled around 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is safe to eat. Um, it's not going to be completely white and you don't have to make it completely white. Pork can be slightly pink and it'll still be safe to eat. So over here, I'm going to cut it into manageable edible pieces. And this is really great too, to do it like this, you let the juices uh, reabsorb back into the pork cutlet. Now we're going to take a look at this. Whoa, this is actually really good. I'm surprised, wow. It actually cooks so much faster than I thought. Okay, now let's plate this. I have this really special half circle rack I bought from Japan. Now we can plate this. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. I bet this is gonna be awesome. So there you have it, about a $2 pork cutlet meal. The rice here, the vegetable here, they're very insignificant in terms of cost. The most expensive thing is the meat itself, which is about $1.10. You have the breadcrumb, the egg, the cornstarch, and then I have some pre-made vegetables here. This is just vegetable broth and two parts barley and one part rice over here. So let's just give this a try. Mmm. Mmm. It's definitely not as good as king cup pork, but this is very, very good in terms of the pork cutlet I've had. I think I mistakenly cooked it in the most perfect way possible because I dunked it into the oil. It looked like it was gonna overcook, but I put it aside and the internal temperature cooked it the rest of the way. This somehow actually is the best I've ever made it. Somehow I thought I made a mistake, but it turned out really, really awesome. I would have to say the game changer thing here is the thermometer. Using the thermometer allowed me to feel that, okay, the pork is safe to eat and I can go as low as 134 degrees. It actually went all the way up to 140. It's actually really, really juicy. So thanks for watching everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my lunch. If you're interested in getting that same thermometer I have, I'll leave an affiliate link down in the video description below. If you're interested in supporting this channel, I have an audible link down in the video description below as well. A Patreon over here and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.